Today's topic is solving literal equations. If you notice the equation I have in front of you, I've asked you to solve for y, which means to get y by itself. Now, if you notice this equation, there are three different terms, 9x, 6y, and 18. When we want to get y by itself, what we want to do is we want to have all of the terms that have y in them on one side of the equal sign, and we want to get all of the terms that don't have y in them to the other side of the equal sign. That's step one. So if we notice this 9x doesn't have a y in it. So I want to move that 9x to the other side of the equal sign. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract 9x from both sides. And after we subtract 9x from both sides, 9x and minus 9x reduce to zero. So they're gone. I've left with 6y. equals, and now I have to take a look at my right-hand side. 18 and negative 9x are not like terms. So I can't do anything there. I just simply have to write 18 minus 9x. I can't combine terms that are not like terms. So now my last step, I need to get y by itself. In order to get y by itself, I need to divide by what's in front of the y by 6, and I divide each term by 6. When I do that, 6 divided by 6 reduces down to 1, so it's just y by itself, equals 18 divided by 6 is 3, and we've got a fraction, 9 divided by 6. We might want to leave this in fraction form. 9 over 6 reduces down to 3 over 2, so minus 3 over 2 x, and there's my reduced form. If we take a look at this second one, we've got an inequality sign instead of an equal sign. But we're going to follow basically the same rules. We take a look at our three terms, and notice that this 14 needs to be moved over to the other side so that it's not on the same side that this y term is on. So I'm going to subtract the 14 over to the other side. And I subtract the 14 because I notice that 14 and negative 14 will cross out to 0. So on the left-hand side of the inequality sign, I'm left with negative 2y, less than or equal to, and again, these two terms are not like terms, 8x minus 14. Now, here's the only difference from when we had an equal sign. When I divide by negative 2 to get the y by itself, there is one special step that I have to follow. Divide by negative 2, I'm left with just y. And when I divide or multiply by a negative, and in this case I divided, I have to switch the direction of the inequality symbol. So this less than or equal to will turn into a greater than or equal to when I divide it by that negative. And then I just go ahead, 8 divided by negative 2, negative 4x. Negative 14 divided by a negative 2 is a positive 7. So I'm left with y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 7. Let's look at another one. This one tells me to solve for m. So I've got this equation, solve for m. I'm going to take a look at the terms. And notice that this, this term right here is the only term on the right-hand side that doesn't have an m. So I'm going to move that over to the left-hand side. To do that, I'm going to add r. And now I'm going to start over here on the right-hand side. Minus r and plus r cross off. They reduce to 0. 3am. And now on the left-hand side, I notice again c and r are not like terms. So I'm just going to have c plus r. Now I've got to get m by itself. And I notice that the 3 and the a are connected to the m by multiplication. So to undo multiplication, I want to divide. Now this is really nice because what we can do is we can do this all in one step. And we can divide both sides by 3a. And watch what happens when we dissolve, divide the left, the right-hand side, I'm sorry, by 3a. The 3s cross out and the a's reduce. They both reduce. So I'm left with just m. m equals, and I've got on my left-hand side, c plus r over 3a. And that's it. Okay, for the last one, solve for x. This one's a little bit complicated. It looks a little tough to start out with. First of all, let's figure out where the x is. Here's the x right here. 
I gotta get that x by itself. So again, any term that's on the same side as the x, I wanna move to the other side if it doesn't have an x in it. So I'm gonna add r. Add r to both sides of my equation. Minus r plus r, cross out. I'm left with s x over m equals, and again, E and R are not like terms, so I have to leave it as E plus R. Now I've got to get X by itself, and I've got a fraction. Sometimes we get freaked out by fractions. But there really isn't any need because we know that this, even though it's a fraction, is still division. And if I want to undo division, I need to use multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by N on both sides. So if I multiply by m on this side, the m cancels out with this m, and I'm left with just s times x equals. And here's the big part of this that we have to understand. When I multiply m on this side, I am actually multiplying m by this entire thing. And so if we were to undo that, we'd be using our distributive property. So I'm going to have, and I'm going to put the m out in front, m times e plus r, the quantity of e plus r, okay? Because we can't just multiply the m just by the r, just by the e, that wouldn't make sense. We've got to multiply them by both of those terms. Now, finally, my last step to get x by itself, I want to divide both sides of my equation by s. And finally, I'm left with s, x equals m times e plus r over s.